with a car-like ride and lighter construction which allows for downsized, more fuel-efficient engines. Large crossovers have largely supplanted traditional sport utility vehicles. It was only natural that GMC, then known for its pickups and truck-based SUVs, was swept up in the craze just over a decade ago. The 2018 Acadia is the newest version of GMC's first car-based utility vehicle. This Threro crossover was fully redesigned last year, a transformation that made the 2017 Acadia smaller and lighter than the previous model. Handling and fuel economy were improved at the expense of passenger and cargo room, but you wouldn't notice the pinch unless you habitually filled the third row with little ones. For those in the first and second row, the Acadia is spacious all around, and both back rows fold flat at the pull of a strap for maximum carrying capacity. The rest of the cabin is airy and inviting, though the overall design is more focused on function than form. That said, if you think competitors' interiors look a bit busy, you probably enjoy the Acadia's more toned-down approach. Though a four-cylinder engine is available, we think it's outmatched by the sheer weight it's asked to move. Better to upgrade to the optional V6, especially if you plan on frequently ferrying friends and family. Overall, we think the 2018 GMC Acadia is a solid choice for a comfortable Threro crossover SUV. But it might also be worth your time to look at a few other rival models, especially if expansive third row seat space and lots of cargo room are priorities for you. What's new? The 3.6-liter V6 is now available on Sol 1 AWD models. Last year's all-terrain package deleted the third row seat, but it can now be ordered with the third row intact. The SL is enticing, but it's a special orderly model that you won't find at the dealership. Though you can find the Sol 1 on lots, it doesn't add much and costs thousands more. The Sol 2 is a better bang for your buck, it's reasonably priced and adds a power lift gate power driver seat and heated front seats. Its available driver alert type package is the least expensive way to add blind spot monitoring to the Acadia. Whichever trim you choose, we think it's worth checking the box for the V6. Its superior performance will be appreciated when you're carrying passengers or towing. Trim levels and features. The 2018 GMC Acadia is offered in SL, SLE, SLT and Denali trim levels. The SL model seems like a great deal, until you realize that it's a custom order model and you'll have to wait for it to be built. There are two levels of the mid-grade SLE trim, the SL1 is only a minor upgrade over the SL but you'll actually find it at a dealership, while the SL2 adds a more substantial level of upgrades. A well-equipped SLT trim is the next step up, and it, too, is split between SLT1 and SLT2 levels. The Denali trim rounds out the lineup with several exclusive high-end features. Depending on trim, the mid-size Acadia is offered in a taller OU, 5-passenger configuration or a thorough configuration with seating for 6 with Secondro captain's chairs or 7 with a Secondro bench. A 2.5-liter 4-cylinder engine 193 horsepower, 188 pound-feet of torque is standard on SL. SLE and SLT1 models. A 3.6 liter V6 310 horsepower, 271 lbft is standard on SLT2 and Inlay models and optional on SL1 with all wheel drive, SL2 and SLT1 trims. Both engines are paired to a 6 speed automatic. Technically, GMC sells an Acadia in the SL trim, with a 7 passenger seating configuration and front wheel drive. White and silver exterior paint are really the only options on this trim. Its features include 17-inch alloy wheels, heated mirrors, keyless ignition and entry, Trizon automatic climate control, a high adjustable driver seat, a leather-wrapped steering wheel, GMC's team driver system, Bluetooth, a 7-inch touchscreen, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone app integration, a rear-view camera. On star with 4G LTE and a Wi Fi hotspot, and a six speaker audio system with a USB port and auxiliary input. It's a built order trim, however, so you're most likely going to see the next level SL1 on dealer lots. The SL1 trim adds only LED running lights and satellite radio, while the SL2 steps it up with 18 inch wheels, 
fog lights, a power lift gate with programmable height stops, roof rails, remote engine start, an 8-way power adjustable driver seat and heated front seats. The sl2 and above trims come standard with middle euro captain's chairs that reduce passenger capacity to 6, but the secondro bench is available. The SL2S available driver alert type package adds blind spot monitoring with a rear cross traffic alert and rear parking sensors. Opting for the SLT1 trim adds the driver alert eye package, an auto dimming driver side and rear view mirror, an upgraded driver information display, a household style power outlet, leather upholstery, power adjustable front seats with lumbar adjustment, and an 8 speaker Bose audio system with a subwoofer. The SLT2 trim adds 20-inch wheels, the V6 engine, a trailering package, driver seat memory functions and heated outboard middle row seats. Also included is the driver alert 2 package that has all of the supporting driver alert eye features plus lane departure warning and mitigation, forward collision warning with pedestrian detection and automatic braking at low speeds, automatic high beams, front parking sensors and a safe at alert driver seat that buzzes when alerts are triggered. An 8-inch touchscreen is available on SL2, SLT1 and SLT2 models. It is paired with the Bose audio system and upgraded driver info display on the SL2, and it can be equipped with navigation on the SLT trims. The top of the line deanly rounds out the lineup with polished wheels, Xenon headlights, a unique grille, a hands-free liftgate, the 8-inch touchscreen with navigation, a configurable virtual gauge display, ventilated front seats, and a heated and power-adjustable steering wheel. The Denali is also eligible for the optional technology package that adds a 360-degree parking camera and adaptive cruise control. You can get all-wheel drive on all Acadias except the base SL. A two-panel sunroof is available on SL2 trims and above. An altering package is also available on SL2 and SLT1 trims and adds the V6 engine, distinct exterior treatments, hill descent control, a more advanced towel wheel drive system and a cargo management system SLT1 only. If five passenger seating is specified, Trism climate control is replaced by dual zone control with rear air vents. Finally, a special suspension with adaptive dampers is optional for AWD SLT2 and Denali trims. Trim tested. Each vehicle typically comes in multiple versions that are fundamentally similar. The S and this review are based on our full test of the 2017 GMC Acadia 3.6 liters V6, 6 speed automatic, AWD. 0. Driving. A strong all around performer. The Acadia is well suited to its mission as a comfortable, easy to drive family hauler. There is never a lack of power with the V6 engine, and the ride quality is well controlled over most roads. Strong, easy to modulate brakes round out its impressive capabilities. Acceleration. When equipped with the V6 engine, the Acadia is never at a loss for power. It takes off from a stop quickly and pulls up hills with ease. We measured a 0 to 60 mph time of 6.3 seconds, which is impressive for a vehicle of this size. Braking. The Acadia has a well-tuned braking system that drivers of all types will find accommodating. An easy to modulate pedal and plenty of stopping power. Our testing showed that, even after multiple aggressive stops, there was no loss of stopping power. Steering. Lightly weighted steering makes it easy to maneuver in parking lots and at speed on the highway. The drawback, however, is limited road feel when you're driving around turns. Handling. The Acadia tends to want to push wide in turns, which is typical in a vehicle like this, but overall it handles its considerable weight quite well. Drivability. Overall feel from the steering, the brakes, the pedal and suspension is excellent. It's very well tuned for this kind of vehicle. The V6 is strong at all speeds, and the transmission is responsive to your gas pedal inputs. Off-road. The optional altering package adds hill descent control and a more sophisticated all-wheel drive system. Both items are helpful off-road, but with only 7.2 inches of ground clearance and 20-inch all-Zs and tires, the Acadia is better suited to snow-covered roads, not rocky trails comfort. 
The Acadia is a very comfortable vehicle for road trips or daily errands. The Acadia has soft, forgiving seats and a compliant suspension that smooths out most road imperfections. Road noise and wind noise are also kept well in check. Seat comfort. The front seats don't have aggressive bolstering but are comfortable over several hours. The rear seats have short cushions but are well contoured. The third row is tighter than in the previous Acadia. There's enough room for carpool duty, but longer trips would be uncomfortable even for kids. Ride comfort. The Acadia gets high marks. It soaks up rough roads very well and with very little cabin noise intrusion. It's not too soft and always feels in control. The all-terrain model is surprisingly supple for a vehicle with 20-inch wheels and tires. Noise and vibration. Very quiet on the road. There's minimal wind or road noise when you're driving on the highway, and engine noise rarely intrudes. High marks. Climate control. There's a dual automatic climate control up front along with additional controls for the rear. The layout is simple with minimal buttons. There are eight fan speeds, and the lowest speed is acceptably low. Dual seat heaters back and cushion and ventilation are available depending on trim. Interior. The overall design of the interior is straightforward with easy house controls. It feels more like a car from behind the wheel compared to some of its competitors, but outward visibility is about the same. Shorter drivers will appreciate its relatively low stepping height. Ease of use. The Acadia uses the same overall layout as the GMC Sierra pickup, which is good. A minimal number of knobs and buttons make it easy to figure things out. But it's not very luxurious looking. Getting and jetting out. A low step in height makes it very easy to get in and out. An average size adult will drop down slightly when getting in, so there's no climbing up into the Acadia. The doors are light, and they open wide. But we're not fans of the door handle design because the handles can pinch fingers easily. Driving position. It feels more car like than the Honda Pilot. The windshield angle is steep but the base of the windshield sits low. You can rest your elbows easily on the door and the center console. Roominess. With the seat all the way back, you can barely reach the pedals. And your head is nowhere near the ceiling. The high console makes it feel a little tight up front. The second row is about average, but the third row is very tight. Visibility. The steep windshield angle reduces the overall view forward. The windshield pillars are of rage size. The rearmost pillars are thick with smallish back windows. The mirrors are average size. The rear view camera has good coverage but not the clearest picture. Quality. Inside, the parking button is a cinder. The quarter panels at the front roof pillar don't line up on the inside or outside. Other interior areas look and feel fine. Utility. There's a decent amount of space with the second row folded, but the Acadia isn't outstanding in any other areas. There's not an abundance of storage space up front, and the limited area behind the third row means you need to pack light. Small item storage. The center console is deep but square, so it doesn't fit anything longer than a pen. There is a small bin in front of the shifter for things such as keys. The shallow door bins don't hold anything very sizable. There's an average size glove box and a place for sunglasses in the overhead console. Cargo space. Open the lift gate and you've got a wide, unobstructed cargo floor with the third row seat folded to work with. Remote release handles make it easy to fold the second row. Note, however, that with the optional third row in place, there's only enough space for a couple duffel bags. Child safety seat accommodation. We like the easy to find latch attachment anchor points. The raised center seat on models with the second row bench makes it more awkward to fit a child seat in the middle. Towing. Towing capacity is 4,000 pounds, which is 1,000 pounds less than that of most competitors. Hauling. The all terrain package forgoes a third row seat in favor of a more flexible cargo bay. This means adjustable tie e down rails additional attachment hooks and a usable underfloor storage system. The cargo area itself is wide and flat, making it well suited to accommodating cargo. Technology. 
The touchscreen technology interface used in the Acadia is one of the easier systems to use at a glance. It favors the features you use most often, which is a plus. Bluetooth pairing is quick and easy. Audio and navigation. The standard GM touchscreen interface is generally good thanks to simple menus and large, easy tread icons. There are knobs for tuning and volume, which are always a plus. The rest of the controls are kept to a minimum to reduce clutter. Smartphone integration. Both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are available. Bluetooth pairing is simple and quick.